Of chord play. This is the Chords of Hawkwind, and I've had some requests to feature some of Hawkwind's music, but even without those requests, I'm definitely putting this together for myself, because this is currently where my ears and fingers are exploring and listening to Hawkwind's music and a lot of space rock. And this just kind of came out of nowhere, but definitely uh, Hawkwind's an essential space rock band, formed in London, England in 1969, and in their career they've released 35 studio albums, 8 EPs, 13 live albums, what, 17 compilations or something like that. They've had dozens and dozens of different musicians and member changes over the years. Definitely an essential space rock band. That, you know, great period, like the late 60s, early 70s, Prague and psychedelic rock kind of merged and became what's known as space rock. And definitely Hawkwind are totally pioneers. I've had lots of conversations with people over the years about space rock, and usually they're confused and they think either it's psychedelic music or progressive rock, but technically space rock does exist, and it basically thrived the late 60s into the early 70s, and then it kind of disappeared. But the sound and that atmospheric quality definitely continued, you know, and definitely appeared in lots of music, pop music and all kinds of stuff. But initially that very spacey kind of sound definitely came from groups like Pink Floyd, Gong, and Hawkwind. And a lot of this can be traced back to the year 1967. That's really when it kind of started, with groups like The Beatles and Frank Zappa and Pink Floyd, you know, issuing albums. The next thing you knew, there came this new subgenre known as space rock. So in the guitar department in Hawkwind's music, we have Dave Brock, and he's actually been the leading guitarist in the band since 1969, since the very beginning. And Dave's playing style is interesting. He's definitely worked with other guitarists in his band, but since this is chord play, and that's basically what Dave did a lot of, you know, chord and rhythm work, a really interesting guitarist, lots of basic bar chords and simple chords, but he would use delay and various effects and kind of make it sound spacey and then combine with the synths and the sound effects and bass and drums and vocals and everything else. You know, Dave's guitar parts would just kind of find that little area. And you're going to notice like some kind of habits and little secrets, you know, from Dave Brock in this episode. So definitely the former member of Hawkwind, Lemmy Kilmister, the late great icon from Motorhead, you know, he originally played with Hawkwind. I think he joined in 1971, and then he was kicked out in 1975. So he appears on four Hawkwind albums, that's three studio albums and one live album, Space Ritual. And then he was kicked out of the band in 75, I think it was a drug bust at the Canadian border or something. He was booted out of the band and then fired up and started Motorhead right after that. And basically for me, you know, last month during Metal Month, I hit Fastway and then Motorhead, and that's where it started as far as my newfound, you know, space rock exploration here. And right after I did the Motorhead lesson, that's when I shifted gears and fell right into Hawkwind. The music and chord parts in this episode actually came from five Hawkwind albums, and I'm basically serving up a lot from the Lemmy years. We are going to hit something from the first album. But honestly, I really do like that era that Lemmy played, you know, in Hawkwind. And after he left, 
you know, they had member changes, of course. Uh, the 70s eventually kind of moved into the 80s. And I kind of lost sight of the band after that. And definitely viewers out there can recommend some albums, maybe more recent from the 80s, 90s, and beyond. Um, but I'm definitely locked on the 70s Hawkwind. I, that's my favorite era. And I've sampled some other eras, and it just doesn't hit me the same way. So maybe it's just me. But definitely, uh, Dave's an interesting guitarist. A lot of bar chords, some bouncy, like, echo delay effects and stuff like that. So it's not so much, like, what he's playing, because definitely Dave is not a shredder. But it's more like the way he played it, or the sounds and effects he used, you know, with his parts. And that's basically the big appeal of Space Rock, because a lot of this stuff is pretty basic. But it's really cool, like an ensemble coming together and making this spacey, atmospheric sound. So anyway, just a heads up. Here we go. With the opening, that's the song D-Rider from the album Hall of the Mountain Grill. And that album title always makes me laugh because it's obviously a play on Grieg's Hall of the Mountain King. But I also read somewhere that Hawkwind used to frequent a diner called the Mountain Grill. So when they named that album, they called it Hall of the Mountain Grill. Haha. Uh -huh. But uh, for this riff, basically Dave's just using some basic bar chords here, which is common for his playing style. But it's that bouncy echo delay effect that he's using that's really cool. So for that... I don't know if you can hear that. All that echoey kind of bouncy delay. So right there I'm basically using some delay from my V-Amp Pro and I'm also using a JHS uh, Series 3 delay pedal on the uh, vintage like echo setting and that's what I've got right there. <laughs> And you can kind of hear like that echoey repeat and it definitely has this really bouncy sound more than likely dave's probably using like an original echoplex that's what it sounds like but uh there you're doing d minor to b flat major right and then relocate to b flat major and he starts doing like this double strum kind of thing and playing with the delay repeats right back to that D minor again. And eventually it moves to just like an A power chord right there. To like a G. kind of get lost in space you just bang a d minor bar chord let it ring and then and there's actually a ghost strum hiding in there and we haven't talked about ghost strums before definitely very common on acoustic guitar so you're letting that d minor ring right and then you're gonna add that ghost strum right here right there and it's literally just the open strings right there and it's just giving you like a couple like a couple milliseconds to make that switch and like I said you can definitely hear this on a lot of acoustic guitar music and there it is happening on electric right? and then you want to do it again going from B flat back to that D minor and you're literally just doing like kind of a ghost strum in there Definitely a good dose of space rock. Next up is the song Be Yourself. This is from the first Hawkwind album. So this is before Lemmy was in the band. And once again, we have some basic bar chord action and some kind of bouncy delay work and a non-diatonic chord progression like this. <laughs> Really basic 
basic stuff here. Just three chords with three stroms and some delay repeats. So it's really just D major right there, part of a D major bar chord. And then move to G minor right there. And then hop over and grab C major. And you're going to really lazily kind of slide that C major off. So that way you can kind of hear like the repeats and it gets kind of swirly right there. Next up is the song Space is Deep, and I'm definitely hitting the live version from Space Ritual. It's definitely different than the studio version, but uh, Space is Deep it basically starts with this D sus 4, and we're still using some kind of, you know, atmospheric delay here, but like this. <laughs> sus 2 D major so really basic stuff there he does a few you know cycles of that and then eventually starts this riff of the time like the year it was released and this is before anybody else had riffs that sound like that really basic bouncy delay but you know d major to d sus 4 d major to d sus 2 back to d major <laughs> right there it's really early that's in the early 70s next up is the song magnu this is from the album warrior on the edge of time and that's a great hawkwind album by the way and this is definitely pioneering of hard rock and metal even punk uh something like this <laughs> Breaking right there but it is for 1975 right there so that E to F kind of signaling or hinting at Phrygian right <laughs> D right there totally kind of serving up a Phrygian flavored riff and once again think of the time period that's very influential talk about influential hard rock metal and punk riffs this is from master of the universe from the album in search of space check this out <laughs> Nothing groundbreaking or that eye-opening. That's really common in today's world, but back in the early 70s, that wasn't really that common to have those kind of thrashy riffs like that. <laughs> Next up is the song 7x7. Seven Seven. This is from the album In Search of Space. And I actually had more luck getting it to sound like the album by hybrid picking instead of just strumming this part. So I'm not sure if he's actually hybrid picking this, but this is what it sounds like. <laughs> has this really atmospheric kind of flavor right there that's a D minor 7 and I was kind of using pick and fingers because that's what it sounds like it doesn't sound like a strum like that it sounds more mellow like fingers maybe it might be all finger picked I'm not really sure partial C7 right there, you know, that C, G, and that B flat. And then back to that D minor 7.
there several times and then eventually from that C7 it just moves down a half step to B7 and then A7 right there and then eventually this power chord riff song and I love those atmospheric I'm um, drifting in space kind of guitar parts cool stuff except the song the psychedelic warlords this is from the album hall of the mountain grill and it opens with this kind of scratchy bouncy delayed riff and then it changes even though it's the same chord progression like this <laughs> D major, E major to G major, and that first time you're kind of scratching between the chords. And then you start like kind of bouncing off that low E. Like that. to play it's just when the whole band comes together you got that bouncy delay effect with the guitar and they're singing you know all these really science fiction and kind of fantasy and uh you know really interesting lyrics going on too the whole package totally gives you that space rock experience okay last but not least is the song paradox and this actually does appear on the more recent version of hall of the mountain grill i believe this was actually a b-side and it wasn't originally on that album but now it is but Paradox is really cool. It's something like this, and once again, bouncy delay effects, nothing really crazy happening guitar-wise, but great song, like this. <laughs> crafty chord work happening here that's going to be e minor right there because we're really just fretting two notes on the a and the d and then there's open strings and that's true for all these chords uh, so that first one you're definitely banging out that low e and then those two fretted notes with all the open strings that's e minor right there all right take that move it down to c uh, don't play the low e open even though i think it does kind of like ring in there a little bit but then that's going to be a c major seven right there Take that, move it up to D, and now you're playing, what, a D6-9 sus-4, like that. So it's really just a three-chord progression, just kind of moving along those two strings. But that's a great song, and it definitely sets the mood for that tune right there. <laughs> forward-thinking and modern that was for 1974. Definitely very essential and pioneering stuff right there. All right, that's going to wrap this episode of Chord Play with this look at the chords of Hawkwind. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is currently where I am. I'm totally just listening and obsessed with Hawkwind at the moment and other, you know, space rock bands. But it's definitely a byproduct of hitting Motorhead last month during Metal Month and thinking about Lemmy. And I literally just put Hall the Mountain Grill on and immediately I was like, ooh, I think I'm feeling this, and I just kind of dove into it like I typically do. If you've been watching my channel, I've actually done different versions of this, you know, for years now. What, we're approaching six years. Uh, you know, Goblin and, you know, albums and Shred and Prog stuff and whatever I've kind of, you know, served up here. Currently, I'm totally lost in space rock and loving it. I've never really explored, you know, some of these bands and sounds. I mean, Pink Floyd and some of those groups I have. But uh, Captain Beyond and some of this stuff where it's like, yeah, I totally want to get into that. Nectar and some of these bands. There's some cool space rock out there for sure. 
anyway, I um, just wanted to kind of give you a heads up as far as why I'm making this and why I'm seemingly so excited. Because Hawkman kicks ass. Anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to my lessons, and I'll be back before you know with more content and material. And rest in peace, Lemmy.